All right, so today we're going to look at how to create our arm wave rig um, so we can start our next project, which will just be um, you guys doing a simple wave with your arm and with your hand. So the first thing that we'll need to do is obviously set up our model. And from there, we're going to be creating a rig on top of it so that you guys can move it around. For this week, we're going to be doing an FK rig, um, which is the forward kinematic rig. What that means is that each joint that we're going to be creating, so you'll have a couple different joints. You'll have one up near the shoulder, you'll have an elbow joint, and you'll have um, kind of a claw joint or a wrist joint. Each of them will work independently, so they won't really affect one another when you make any changes. And then next week, um, for the next project that we'll do, we'll create the same model, but then we're going we're gonna to rig it with inverse kinematics so that they will work with one another. So if you, to, if you were to move your wrist joint or your claw joint, it would actually affect some of the others. So to get started on this one today, we just need to create our model. So I'm gonna create a polygon primitive and I'm gonna to go to cube. Okay, once I have my cube created, I'm gonna go into vertex mode and I'm gonna select one side so that I have the four vertexes on the right, uh, for me, my right side created. I'm going to go into scale. I'm going to scale these down quite a bit. And then I'm going to push them together. Um, so we just kind of want to get this general shape right here. And this is going to act as our shoulder. Um, so I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. That looks pretty good. Okay, when we have that, um, the size that we are looking for, I'm going to select it. We also just want to rename it, so I'm going to call this one Base. And in my uh, viewport here, I'm also going to go turn wireframe on shaded on. Um, I just like working that way, so I'm going to keep that there. So that looks pretty good. Um, so that is our base, and now we want to create our first join. So I'm going to go back into Create Polygon Primitives, and I'm going to do a Sphere. I'm going to shrink my sphere down quite a bit. Um, probably a little bit smaller than that. And I'm going to push that inside um, of my shoulder. So I'm going to go into my front view so I can see this a little bit better. Turn my wireframe on. And I'm just going to kind of center it. So I'm going to push that in, roughly get it about centered um, inside of the shoulder joint. And when I have that, I want to rename that sphere shoulder joint. So as of right now, you should have two pieces. You should have your base and you should have your shoulder joint. And the shoulder joint is what will end up moving um, things around. So we're going to create a couple different joints to kind of run through the model here. So from there, we want to create the first part of our arm. All right, so, so far we should have our shoulder joint created and our base. And the first thing we want to do is for our arm, we want to create our first segment of our arm. So I'm going to go into create polygon primitives and do a cylinder. The cylinder is obviously going to be way too big as of right now. Um, so I'm going to rotate mine. I'm going to rotate my Z axis. It could be a little different for you. Um, then I'm going to go 90 degrees. And then I'm going to scale this thing way down because it's actually going to fit inside of our uh, shoulder joint here. So I'm going to get it the size that I want. Probably something like that looks good. Uh, I'm going to go back into my front view. And we want to make sure that we are putting our cylinder completely inside of our shoulder joint on the left side. So if I were to click um, 4 on my keyboard, you'll go into your wireframe mode. Um, and I'm just going to line up the edge of my cylinder right here uh, with the edge of my base just to make sure that they're somewhat connected and that when we start moving things around, it's not going to pop out. Um, so I'm going to go into vertex mode from there, select my edges, and I'm going to pull this out a little bit, um, maybe to right around there. That should work. Okay. So now we have three different pieces. We have our base, our shoulder joint. And I'm going to rename my cylinder to be arm01. That is the first part of our arm. So now we want our arm to kind of get into our elbow. So I'm actually just going to 
uh, select my shoulder joint that we've already created and duplicate it. So uh, select it, click Command D, um, and then it's not going to look like anything happened, but you're, you should now see shoulder joint 1. And if you pull that off to the side, um, you'll have two different joints. So now I'm going to pull that one out. I'm going to line it up on my arm, and I'm going to rename it elbow joint. And that looks pretty good, and it's about halfway lined up, just like we did um, with the other one, which is what we're looking for. Okay. Then I'm going to select my arm, because now we're going to do the next part of our arm, kind of where our forearm would be. Um, so I'm going to select my arm 01, and I'm going to duplicate that. So Command-D will duplicate. I want to rotate this down here. Um, so that's my rotate Z for me. So I'm just going to zero that out. And then I'm going to move it over and kind of line it up um, and roughly center it over here with my elbow joint. So that looks pretty good. OK. Uh, I'm going to make my forearm a little bit longer, which isn't necessary by any means, but mine just feels like it needs to be a little bit longer than what I had. Um, and I'm going to keep it at arm02 so you can keep that named where we already are. So now we should have a couple more pieces. We're going to want to create one more joint. So if I select my elbow joint now and do the same process, I'm going to Command D, I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to pull down my new elbow joint that we just created and center that on the bottom here. And then I'm going to rename that claw joint. All right, so now we should have pieces that kind of go together and look like this. We have our base, which kind of acts as our chest, um, our shoulder joint, arm 01, our elbow joint, arm 02, our claw joint. And then off of the claw joint, we're going to want to create three fingers. So we're just going to use three different fingers. Um, for our animation, obviously, normally you would have five fingers um, and more of a hand. But just for the movements that we're looking for, we don't need all of that detail. Um, so I'm going to select my arm 02. I'm going to go into my front view again. And I am going to duplicate it. And I'm going to pull it down underneath my claw. And as of right now, obviously, it's way too big. So I want to scale it way down, too, um, because this is going to act as our finger. So I scaled that quite a bit. And I'm going to kind of roughly line this one up in here. Um, let's see. Going to my perspective view so we can kind of see where we are. I'm going to pull it off to the side. So something like that looks good. Um, we're going to put two two fingers on our, on our right side. And then we're going to put a, a finger on the other side to kind of act as a thumb. So I might even pull this over a little bit more to the right so that I have a little more space between them. And if you do that, you just want to be careful and make sure that you're still um, fully inside of your claw joint. So you may need to move it and just adjust things a little bit here. So if we look, that looks pretty good. Um, and that should work. So that will act as arm 03 right now. You want to select it and just call it uh, finger 01. So once we have finger 01 created, in our side view down here, uh, we're just going to duplicate it and create our second finger. So select it, duplicate it, and pull it off to the right side and kind of keep things lined up. Um, because you do want your fingers to kind of be centered uh, with one another. So that looks pretty good. Um, I might move them a little bit farther outside because I'm going to want the other finger to kind of squeeze in the middle of them over where my thumb will be. So that should work. So now we've got finger 01, finger 02, and we will then create um, our thumb. So before we create our thumb, why don't we create our fingertip? Um, so in order to create our fingertip, 
I'm actually just going to grab my claw joint because we've already got the sphere created. Um, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to scale it down quite a bit here um, because this is going to kind of act as a knuckle. I want to kind of line it up. I'm going to scale it down even more. We don't want it to be awkwardly large here. So let me zoom in, scale it down, and something like that should work. Okay, um, so right now it's, it's centered. You want to put it on top of one of your fingers. So now if I were to go into it and take a look, So that looks pretty good. I might make it a little bit bigger um, just so there's a little definition between the two. And let's see. So that should work pretty well for us. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit too um, so that there's more of a gap there. And that should work. So now we have our our fingertip. Um, so I'm going to select it. It's still, it, mine says claw joint one, yours probably says the same. Um, so I'm just going to rename that fingertip one. And the last thing that we want to do on our fingertip one is just kind of pull off the end of our finger so that we can grab because we are going to use this model to do an object throw for our next project. And we're going to want to be able to have that finger on there. So you want to think of this sphere that we've created right here is kind of the knuckle. And then you want to pull off um, the fingertip from there. So I'm going to go on my fingertip and I'm going to right click and go into face. And we want to go into our face mode. I'm just going to select the bottom um, portions here. Oh, that wasn't in face. There we go. Um, so that looks good. Um, you can decide how many you want to select. It's really up to you. Um, there's not really a right or wrong way to do that. And then what you want to do is hold down shift and right click somewhere on one of the selected faces that you have and go to extrude face. Okay, so that's going to load up some extrude options. I'm going to select this little circle with the line coming out of it. And then I'm going to pull down on my... Um, geometry here. So I pulled that down. And on the bottom, it's kind of rounded. So I want to adjust that. Um, so I'm going to select this, uh, the, the scale box on top. And I'm actually just going to pull that down. And what that'll do is it'll flatten things out. So if I look in the other view, it looks pretty good right now. Um, so the only other thing that I want to do on it now is actually rotated. So in my front view, I'm going to now select this outside circle that's here, um, the blue circle, and that'll load up some rotate controls for us. And I want to rotate it in a little bit so that it has a little definition there um, so that we can grab items with it. Okay. So let's see how that looks. So that looks pretty good. Um, so that is kind of what we're looking for as far as the fingertip goes. Um, so you can see it comes off of our finger. We have this sphere which acts as our knuckle. And then on the bottom, you get the actual fingertip which comes down and goes to an angle. And you want it to point in um, towards where our thumb will be over on this side uh, once we create that. So before we create our thumb, let's just duplicate our fingertip and put it over on the other side as well. Um, so in my side view, if I zoom out a little bit, I can see both fingers that we've created. I can just duplicate it and pull it over to the other side and kind of roughly center it up in there. Oh, there we go. Okay. And then we should be good. So it should automatically rename it fingertip02. So um, before we do our thumb, let's just make sure we're on the same page. So we have our base, and then you should have your shoulder joint, which is just that sphere. We have arm 01 coming off of that. We have our elbow joint, arm 02, 
our claw joint. And then so far we have two fingers. So we have finger 01 and finger 02. And coming off of them, we have fingertip 01 and fingertip 02. So we just need to create fingertip 03 and finger 03, which will act as the thumb. And then we can start actually putting our rig in place. So I'm gonna select um, my finger and my fingertip, and I'm just gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna pull those over to the other side. I'm going this other view so that I can get this lined up correctly. And I'm gonna adjust things a little bit here. I'm gonna go into my side view, and I'm gonna kind of pull this um, into the center so that um, they're kind of evenly spaced with one another. And remember the, the thumb in this view would be pushed behind the other two, but you, you want it kind of centered between them. So that looks right. And then the only other thing that you need to do is uh, select your fingertip and go into rotate. And you wanna rotate Y um, 90 degrees and 180 degrees, sorry. And then that should point our fingertip in. And that is our model. So we'll just run through it, make sure you guys have it matching up. Um, you have our base, which is our shoulder. You have your shoulder joint, which is coming off of that, and it's kind of halfway pushed in. You've got your arm, which goes into your shoulder joint. Arm 01, it also goes into your elbow joint, which is over here. Coming out of the elbow joint going down is arm 02. Um, and that goes into the claw joint, which is down here. And then coming off of the claw joint, we have three fingers. We have finger one, finger two, finger three, and then we have fingertip one, two, and three. Fingertip one and two should point inside and fingertip three should point. So they should kind of um, look at each other. If you guys have that looking how I have it here, make sure you save so that we can start um, setting up our rig. Okay, so we wanna set up our rig now. Um, and before we do that, we want to make sure that everything is kind of laid out correctly. We wanna make sure everything's in place because we're not gonna really move our geometry anymore. So I'm gonna select all of my geometry. I'm just gonna drag a big box over it. I'm gonna go up to modify and I'm gonna freeze transformations. So now if you select around on different items, everything should be zeroed out. Um, and then we are good to go. So I'm gonna load up my outliner. Um, so in Windows Outliner, you wanna just take a look at this. And we're gonna group things together um, just to keep everything nice and clean. So we wanna grab all of our geometry first, which is really all that we've created so far. So from my base all the way to my fingertip, and I'm just gonna click Control or Command G, um, and that will group them together like this. And then I'm gonna select my group, and I'm gonna group that one more time. I'm gonna call this outside group Robot Arm. Um, and if you click Shift and hit this plus sign, it'll expand everything out. So inside of our Robot Arm, we have group number one right now. I wanna rename that Geo. And now from here, everything should be lined up as one. Uh, we want to adjust our hierarchy like we've done on our previous projects so that the items work together correctly. So our shoulder joint kind of plays off of our base joint. So I'm going to middle click on my shoulder joint and I'm going to drag it on top of the base. And then I'm going to middle click on the arm and drag it on top of my shoulder joint middle click on top of the elbow joint and drag it on the arm and kind of work my way um, down the list a little bit here. So arm two would go on the elbow joint. The claw joint would go on arm two. Um, and then from here, it's gonna get a little bit different. So I'm gonna put all three of my fingers on the claw joint actually. Um, so you wanna think all, all of the fingers really act as the same. Um, so finger 02 and 03 wouldn't necessarily go on 01. Um, we just want them to be set up with the claw joint. And then the corresponding fingertip 
will go on that finger. There we go. So just middle mouse click and drag everything on top of them um, until you have something that looks like this. So you should have your robot arm group and inside of that you should have your geometry group and inside of your geometry group you should have all of your geometry. So you have your base um, and then you have your shoulder joint, your arm all one, your elbow joint, arm all two, your claw joint, and then you have finger one, two, and three, and coming off of them, you have fingertip O1, fingertip O2, and fingertip O3. So make sure you have it looking like that. That is important because when we start to do our rigging, if it's not lined up correctly, um, the items won't move the right way. So we've got that. I'm going to close out of my outliner. And now we want to start creating... Um, our controls. So the first control that we want to make is going to be kind of our master move, um, which we've used before. So I'm going to go to create NURBS primitives and I'm going to go down to circle. Um, so the size itself is already okay. Um, it's just lined up wrong. So I'm going to click E so I can rotate this thing down. I'm going to rotate Z 90. And then in my uh, front view here, I want to pull it over to be around my base. Okay. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. It's just a little bigger than I need it to be. I uh, just have it wrap around that base. Once you have that, select it and just call it arm main control. All right, so we have our arm main control, and we need a couple more controls set up in order for our rig um, to work correctly. So we actually just need three more of these controls to work. So if I select my arm main control, we can kind of just duplicate this same thing. Um, so I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna move it out a little bit so you can clearly see it's different. Um, and then we wanna rotate this one. So I'm gonna rotate it um, rotate my X, I'm going to go 90 degrees so that it's facing um, facing forward. And in my front view, I'm going to scale it down and kind of line it up over uh, my shoulder joint. So just kind of roughly center that in there. Um, you can make it as big as you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm not, I don't want mine to be terribly large, but I want it to be big enough so that I can select it. So something like that looks pretty good. You want to select it and rename it shoulder control. All right. So now it should be pretty easy from here. We want to select that shoulder control and we want to duplicate it. Move it over the elbow and line it up. And rename it elbow control. All right. I'm going to select it and I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And I'm going to move it down over my claw, line it up, and I'm going to name that one claw control. I'm going to make the claw control a little bit smaller because we're going to uh, work with the, with the fingers themselves a little bit. So I'm just going to shrink it a tiny bit. So we should have something now um, that looks like this. So we've got our geometry. And on top of the geometry, we have three different or four different controls. Sorry, we have our arm main, we have our shoulder control over the shoulder joint, we have our elbow control over the elbow joint, and we have our claw control over the claw joint. Once we have all of those lined up, we want to just select them all. Go to modify and freeze transformations. Now they should be zeroed out just like your geometry. And that's just gonna help keep everything clean. Okay, so let's go back into our outliner. And now we need to set these items up in our outliner as well. Um, so if I click shift and I click this drop down on our robot arm, you can see um, everything laid out that we had. 
But on our bottom here, you can see the different controls that we just created. So you should have four different controls. So I'm going to select just my controls. So I'm going to shift select the four of them and group them. So Command G. And I'm going to rename that to be controls. So that looks good. Um, so now we want to drag that into our robot arm group. So if I select it, our middle mouse click the group and drop it into robot arm, it should now put it on the bottom for us. If it's on top, that's fine too. Um, just make sure it's separate from the geometry group. Um, I can now expand that out. And we want to line them up the correct way as well. So um, our shoulder control should come off of our arm main control. So middle mouse click and drag that on there. Our elbow control should go off of our shoulder control. And then our claw control should go off of our elbow control. Um, so similar setup with what we did with the geometry, um, except this time we're doing it with the controls. So your outliner should now um, be set up exactly how we want it for the rest of the animation. Um, so take a look at it, just make sure it compares to what we have here. Um, and then we will move on and actually start creating a little bit of a finger movement um, so that we can kind of clinch our, our fingers together and open them up a little bit um, so that we're able to grab when we do our second animation. Okay. So we want to move our fingers, um, but before we do that, the one thing we haven't done yet is constrain our geometry to our controls. Right now, if I try and move my controls around, everything moves exactly how I want it, except it's not bringing my geometry with us. So we want to just parent those together first. Um, so the first one we'll do is select our arm main control, and then we want to shift select our base geometry. I'm going to go up to um, make sure you're in the animation setting. I was in modeling, so go into animation go to constrain and the parent option box. Make sure your maintain offset is checked and click apply. Okay. So let me just find where that put that in here for so I can show you guys. Um, so it should be right off of our base. It kind of drops all the way down. Um, so if that is working for you, then you are in good shape and we can do the next one. So. Um, the next one we want to do is we want to select our shoulder control and shift select our shoulder joint, constrain parent, select our elbow control and shift select our elbow joint, constrain parent, and then select our claw control and shift select our claw and constrain parent. Okay, so now if we were to move these around, they should move together. And that is what we are looking for. Make sure that works, um, zero everything out and save it so that everything looks okay. So now we have set up our controls. We've set up our rig for the most part um, and everything's actually working. So in reality, we could really start animating at this point and doing our wave, but before we do that, like I said before, we want our fingers to open and close. So in order to do that, we want to set up a set driven key on those fingers. So I'm going to close out of my outliner and I'm going to select my claw control. And then I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to add an attribute. For long name, I'm going to set this as pinch. I'm going to go down to the minimum and I'm going to set it at negative 10. And then the maximum I'm going to set at 10. Default can already be at zero. Um, that's fine. And then just click add. Close that out. Over on the right side, when you have claw control selected, on the bottom you should see pinch. And, and that's what we want. So if you have that there, now we can start working our set driven key for those items um, so that we can just control the pinch of our fingers just by that one attribute. Um, so I want to load up my set driven key um, and it is in key. So if I go up to key and go to set driven key and do set, it'll load up the set driven key options. So our driver, which is going to be up top, 
is going to be our pinch. So I'm going to select my claw control and I'm going to load driver. And then over on the right, I'm just going to select pinch. Okay, so this is going to get a little different here. Um, for our driven, we actually want to drive all three fingers at once. So we're going to control all three of them at once. We're not going to give them individual controls because it's just not necessary for this rig. So if you select all three of your fingers and load them as the driven, you should now see all of your fingers load over here. All right, so we want to select um, all of them at once. So you want to make sure you're rotating the right thing. Um, so I want to rotate my Z. You want to rotate whatever goes kind of um, in and out for all three of them. So rotate Z for me. So I'm going to select rotate Z on finger 01. And I'm going to select rotate Z on all of them. Um, so you may have to do shift won't really work because it's going to select too many things. Um, so you want to do command. For me, it's command. It might depend on what kind of computer you're on. Um, but I'm going to rotate Z. I'm going to click finger 01, rotate Z, and finger 03, rotate Z. So now you should have all of them selected, um, and we should be good to go. So make sure they're all there. Let me just do it again because I clicked off of it as I was trying to show you guys. All right, you have everything set. Um, you have it looking good, and you want to just click key. All right. So if we click our claw control, we wanted to make sure our pinch was at zero. Um, if it wasn't at zero, you would have just keyed them to be set at a certain value already, which isn't what we wanted. So you'd want to undo it, set yourself at zero, and then key your first your first frame. Um, so I want to now key them open a little bit. So if I select my uh, claw control here and go to my pinch value, I can put it at 10. Okay, and then for my fingers here, I want to adjust them out. So I'm going to select finger, um, my two fingers on the right side first. And I'm going to pull them open a little bit. And then I'm going to select my other finger and open that as well. I selected my fingertips. Make sure you don't do that. Sorry, I had to redo that. Um, so I'm going to open them up quite a bit. And they don't have to be even, um, but, you know, get them somewhat close. And once you have things opened up, make sure that your pinch value is at 10 and click key. So now if you were to move your pinch um, from 0 to 10, it should open up your hand. So now we want to set them close. So I want to bring this all the way down to negative 10, which should be our minimum value. I'm going to select my fingers again. And I'm going to close them. Okay. So that looks good. Um, I probably overdid it a little bit, but that's fine. It gives you a little more, a little more flexibility. So my pinch is at negative ten. My hand's completely closed, and I'm going to key it. So now, if I were to select my claw control, um, negative ten, my hand is closed. And as I move up, my hand opens. So um, you can see that difference, and that's what we're looking for. So now if we want to do our pinch when we pick our item up, it's pretty easy to just open up our hand, close it around the item, and then we can throw it. So that looks good. I can close out my set-driven key. Make sure you guys are saving your files um, so that we can move on from there. So we've actually got our rig pretty much all set up, um, and we should be we should be good to go. So we just want to do a couple more cleanup things for our files um, before we start animating. Um, so I just want to lock and hide some attributes because you're not going to be animating certain things. So it'll just help clean clean it up a little bit. Um, so on my arm control main, um, I want to select it. And I'm just going to lock and hide my scales. We don't need that. Um, so you should still be able to translate things around. You should still be able to rotate, but you don't need to scale it. Um, as far as your shoulder control goes, um, you want to lock and hide all of the translate values. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to select my scale values. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to lock and hide. All you should have in your shoulder control is rotate XYZ and your visibility. 
All right, so for my elbow control, this one's a little bit different. If you think about your elbow and if you put your elbow out to the side and kind of line it up like we've done here, um, you can only rotate your elbow really one way. Um, and it's, for me, my rotate Z value. You can kind of do the whole robot dance move right here with the robot Z value. But if you think about it, you really can't rotate your elbow in the, uh, in the X frame here. So we don't want to be able to do that because it's unrealistic. So if you put your elbow out, you may think you can go a little bit with it, but in reality, it's really not going as far. It's more your wrist and your shoulder that are rotating. So if you try and keep your shoulder completely still, you can't actually move your elbow. You can only go kind of left to right with it and side to side. So I want to hide and lock everything that's not just my rotate Z value for my elbow control. And that's important. So select that. I'm going to select all the other values here. And I'm going to lock and hide those. And then on my claw, um, the claw can really go like your wrist if you move it around. That can go any way, um, but we're not going to want to translate it. So just lock and hide the translates in your scales. Uh, leave your three rotates, leave your visibility, and leave your pinch. So if we run through it real quick on our arm main control, you should have all three translates, all three rotates. On our shoulder control, you should just have the three rotates. On our elbow control, you should only have, for me, it was my rotate Z. It could be different for you guys, but just make sure it's kind of that side to side, like you're doing the robot type movement. Um, and then our claw control, you should just have the three rotates. You should have the visibility. And you should also have the pinch value um, that we created as well, which should move it around. If you've got all of that looking good, save your file. Um, and then the only other thing we want to do is just group our geometry into an animation layer. So just go select your geometry. Um, so shift select everything geometry wise. Once you've got it all selected on the bottom right here where you got the little plane with the ball, just select that. That's going to add all of your selected objects into a separate layer. Double click on your layer settings. Just rename it geo layer and then set um, the third value here to R, which is our reference. Now we just can't move our geometry at all. We don't want to be able to, we only want to be able to move our controls around. Um, because once you start animating on geometry, like we've talked about, bad things happen. So that is um, our rig, and that is how we're gonna do our, our waving of the arm for our first project with this, with this model. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, this one will be a little trickier probably than the object throw because the IK rig, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to work with, but it's harder to set up. So it's kind of that toss up between the two. Um, but this is what we're going to use for this project here. Um, hopefully it looks and works properly. If not, um, there is one loaded. So just let me know if you had any issues with it. But you should have your geometry. It should be on a reference layer so that you can't select it. And then you should have your arm control your shoulder control, your elbow control, and your claw control. And you should have that pinch value set as well. If you've got that, you are good to go. Um, so load up a new scene, referencing your model and your rig, and start blocking out those animations.